Hello, my name's Miles, and this is Steam Graveyard, the gaming series where I unearth the lost games of the Steam store. Today's game is Pineapple Smash Crew, and guess what? It's got mouse controls! Finally! Jeez, like the first game I've taken a look at in this gaming series that actually has mouse controls. Whew. So, this game plays a little bit like cannon fodder. It reminds me a little bit of a game called Silent Bomber that was on the PS1. An absolutely amazing hidden gem that luckily these days has kind of gotten a bit more attention. So let's try this out. Hmm, not sure which difficulty. I suppose medium. So limited recruits, level failed if all my marks die, radiation leak danger. Sure. And <laughs> yeah, straight away you've got like Rue, Moyer, Cyphus, and Divs. Um, let me think. In Cannon Fodder, it was Jupes and. Ooh, what was the other one? It's like Jupes and Jobs or something like that. Oh, I should really know that. Anyway, Jupes was the, the, the first character that you get. Um, okay, so this is my career history, nothing really to see yet. 24 recruits available, so you play with four players at a time. Uh, you control all four at the same time. And I guess if any of those die, then you can switch them out with a new one. But you can only do that up until, you know, 24 is reached, and then you've got to keep your guys alive or else it's game over. Now, I have played this game back whenever it came out, actually, in 2012. So it's fairly old. It never got recognized, never got picked up on Steam. I picked it up, hmm, I'm trying to think, maybe in a bundle? Maybe a couple of years after? Probably not that long after. And I played it on a whim, and I really, really enjoyed it. So much so that I think I spent like 10 hours in it, and I, I beat it quite a few times. Oh, the biscuit. <laughs> okay. So, a little bit of customization here. You know, um, purely cosmetic. Let me see. All the characters look the same? Pretty much. Just uh, a different colored outline. Okay, let's try this then. So, level 1. Mission, within target areas. Destroy any hostiles present. Make burn tech, shrimp class. Generator, full power, ship damage, moderate. Right, these sort of things are, uh, the levels are random, uh, randomized. So these give you an idea of what to expect. And I'm not sure what these classes or, you know, full power, moderate, ship damage mean, but I can take a guess. Well, sure, we'll find out whenever we play. Okay. So it's nice, kind of modern retro style. WASD to move. Nice bit of music. Nice and quick. Okay, shooting. Hold left mouse button to fire guns. Try it now. The ammo bar lowers and refills when not firing. Okay. Cool. So you can see it on, on the right there, bottom right, the uh, ammo. Okay. Oh, so that that's your ship damage, so I guess you get less maneuverability whenever the ship's damaged. You know, uh, because it is sort of a twin-stick shooter. And you need, uh, need some good movement in those games. Okay, grenades. You picked up a grenade icon. Click right mouse to fire your grenades. And of course, this is the name of the game, Pineapple Smash Crew, as in Pineapple Grenades. Though your main weapon, as far as I can remember, can be upgraded, and the grenades come in a couple different versions, and they're your main sort of special ability. Okay, so let's check this out. Okay, after you fire a grenade, click again to detonate. To change leader, each merc can hold one grenade, use the mouse wheel to change who is the lead merc. Okay, that's pretty cool. 
So, okay, so he's now got the rocket. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, it's very upbeat, nice and colorful, and uh, good controls. Power cube. Oh, I didn't see that. I think it was about money, though. All these little blue things are the um, your currency. Oh, look at that radiation leak in 52 seconds. Okay, I guess that's how much time I've got to beat this level. Okay, my first enemies. Ooh. So I wouldn't really class this as a roguelike, but there is a... I suppose there is elements of, of it. Randomization of levels, of the missions, and... Uh, the uh, permanent deaths. But as far as I know, there's not really that much customization. It's more whenever you actually jump into each level, that's where the customization kind of comes into play. You know, making sure that each of your characters has uh, weapons and uh, a nice selection of different grenades so that you can, you know, take advantage of any situation that you come across. Um, in the top right, you can see there is a, a little... Uh, it's almost like Binding binding of Isaac type of... Ooh, type of map. That's nice, you know. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Wow, I just noticed my health's not doing too good. Okay, I've got to play a little bit more strategically here. Okay. Invincibility, okay, that's nice. Probably timed. Whoa! I just lost in my guys somewhere. What do I do with this? Oh, okay, so he can drop. Oh, I must have picked up a med pack then. Oh yeah, there is another one there. Okay, so can I destroy that? Yeah, I think I was just blowing myself up the entire time. I didn't actually realize that uh, those grenades do hurt yourself. And the blast radius is actually pretty big. But hey, it's the... My first time playing this in like... I guess five years and... Yeah, in terms of playing a game for this series, you know... Um, Oh, finally got a mouse. That's good. Ooh, okay. So there's, uh, really, really good... Wow, what? What? Whoa. Oh, the radiation. Okay. Okay, I see what happened there. All right. Jules, Jop, Stu, and RJ. Now those are the names from Cannon Potter. Ah, oh, that's great. Okay, I think they can level up, or at least gain experience, and much like cannon fodder, I'm not sure if those that experience actually goes to, to anything, or if they just, it's sort of like bragging rights, you know, they become like, you know, corporal, sergeant, and eventually up to like major, and things like that. So, let's see. I'd like one that doesn't have... Radiation. Um, backup power. Let's try this. So, full power generator, which I would assume is to do with lights. Maybe it has something to do with turrets as well. Maybe lower power has less turrets popping up. Uh, ship damage minimal, so I'll be able to strafe around a bit better. Okay, every area and ship in PSC is randomly generated. Yep. Okay, so, nice to be tooltips. Click here to choose grenade. Oh, wow, that's cool. Rapid fire machine gun for the shield. Huh, I'm not sure what that was for, actually. You see how that... Radiation again is 
in this level. What's that? Okay, so I scared them all away now, because I've got fear. So yeah, I guess at the sort of start of the level, you're able to customize... Oh, maybe a new drop? Maybe that's what it is. Because I'm still picking up the rockets and the grenades. Okay, so I'll try out this uh, machine gun grenade, whatever. Well, wow, how? Oh. Okay, so it kind of creates like a... Oh, that was the other grenade. Yeah, it kind of created like a... Uh... Uh, what do you call it? Wow, my mind has just gone blank. A... a turret. A turret. A machine gun turret. <laughs> okay. I should be paying more attention to... well, everything, first of all. But, uh, yeah, the map... the map is actually telling me where to go specifically. But sure, I'll have a look around here first, and then, uh... Go back to where I'm supposed to go. I kind of feel like these things should do something. But sure. Okay. So, I guess the radiation leak really is just a timer. And the longer you stay on the map, the more money that you can get, which maybe there is some... something more to the uh, unlock system. Maybe it's... maybe XP does play a part. But, of course, the longer you stay, the more you risk not being able to complete the level because, well, radiation kills you. Now, the speed of this game and the reaction times that you need increases significantly the longer you play. These are really just the starting areas. So, later on, though... Ow! <laughs> I totally missed that! Come on. Okay, grenade! And of course, there's bosses and everything, and, uh... Uh, yeah, the bosses are... play out a bit like bullet hells. Oh no, I, I lost... Who did I lose? Jops? Oh no, not Jops. Okay. Yeah, so it takes a while to get the flow of this game. And it really is all about flow. Uh, what am I missing? I have to blow this up. Hmm. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I lost jobs. Oh, so you do. So there you go. So there's the trade-off. You can spend time running around the map while the timer is ticking down to level up your guys and get better armor, I'm assuming? Maybe abilities? And more points. Uh, again, I think points are only for the customization, the appearance customization. Let's go with that one, sure. Good old jewels. Okay, so these are still danger level low. Let's see. Let's go for a low power one. Yeah, backup power. Okay, collect power cubes to level up and get more grenade types. Oh, so there is a persistent upgrade system in place. Ooh, ooh, that didn't go well. And I just walked straight into a big laser beam. Okay. Yeah, you've really got to use those heal grenades. You got to keep those uh, for a good time. 
So it's a very fast-paced game, you know, very arcadey, but plenty of strategy. You do have to keep an eye on things. And of course, the faster the game is, the harder it is to do commentary on it, because I'm constantly trying to uh, keep my eye on the screen. And oh, your grenade. Okay. Um, I mean, flamethrower. Come on. Okay. And zip past. Nice. Yeah, there's really good rhythm about this game. I, I do remember really enjoying it. I beat it at least once whenever whenever I first got it. So I'm really glad to... Well, I mean, <laughs> I was going to say I'm really glad to be showcasing it here, but... That's the whole thing about this gaming series, is that it's the games that never really took off. This didn't do that well. Not a lot of people know about it. And, uh, yeah, it's a real shame. This is back in... 2012 as well, and this is before Steam started having, you know, nearly 100 games a day coming out. So before it to just go, uh... to be released without anybody taking notice of it, it's kind of surprising. Okay, I am gonna pop this heal. Hey, Frosty, and alert. Okay, I'm... Yeah, I want to see what this computer room is. I'm assuming it's like a... like a bonus room? There's a bit of a Smash TV feel to this as well. I actually recently just bought Smash TV for the Super Nintendo. Great game. Jeez, I love that game actually. <laughs> yeah, twin stick shooters, you know... I've always thought, you know, sort of thought to myself, what is the one type of game that I enjoy the most, or that I'm skilled the most at? Oh, look at this. Okay. Um, so I gained access to this console. This one says, Encyclopedia Wakartica Entry, The Galactic Union Part 2. Okay, so it gives you a bit of the history of the universe that you're in. A little bit of flavor text. That's nice. Oh, so that's what the computer was. Okay. So there's a bit of a story whenever you continue playing this, I guess. Um, if you can get the computer consoles, which are sort of out of the way, they're not by the objective, so again, you've got to use more time. Oh, actually, I was not paying attention, and I don't have any time left. So I'm gonna get to the end. Oh no! <laughs> get safe, and then pop the health. Oh man, that radiation really is devastating. <laughs> That's cool. Again, I, I didn't want to speak because I was just holding my breath to, to make sure that hit the uh, exact direction I wanted it to. Yeah, wow, I, I really have to pay attention to the radiation meter. Again, playing something like this, arcadey, fast-paced, with a timer on top of everything. Yeah, that's, that's tough to do commentary on top. So, we've got Stu up to level 1 at least, so he, sure enough, does have more health now. And we've got our new recruits. And I'm already down to 16. Eight mercenaries dead. Jeez, I am just blowing through them. Well, I think Stu deserves a hat. Let us see. Let's go with that. That hat's from something. I know one of them is Total Biscuit, but I'm not sure what the other one is. Okay. You know what? Let's bump it up a bit. Oh, there's different ship classes? 
Oh, no, no, no. It's It actually tells you what the objective is. Jeez, I, I did not notice that. Okay, uh, destroy any hostiles present. Medium to low danger. High ship damage. Backup power. Yeah, sure. The mothership is an incredibly valuable shipwreck. Claiming it would fund a smash team for life. Okay. Oh, I'm guessing that's what this entire ship is. That Oh no, maybe, maybe it's a special thing. Hmm. Or maybe it's the end boss. Yeah, uh, the end level of the game. Okay, I'm not gonna play around. I'm just gonna go straight for the targets. So, speed has gotta be by my side this time. Okay. And the music has got me pumped. So, yeah, no more messing around here. I'm gonna get this get this done. No casualties. And again, this is the harder level. Uh oh, <laughs> that's not good. Um, how do I do this now? I think I've got to kill everybody to open up that door. I think maybe maybe I have to go to the green area. Hmm. Not sure. Maybe there's a key? Okay, that's locked too. Oh jeez, that's locked too. Okay, there we go. Oh, oh, of course, this was one of the target errors, so... Uh, the mission ob objective was to actually destroy all the enemies. Okay. Oh, what am I doing? I've gotta, gotta keep moving. So I've got to make sure that I keep some things for uh, for the boss room, or for the final room. Nice health pack and plenty of uh, DPS grenades. Okay. Oh, slow mo. Oh, stuck on the. Oh, <laughs> why did I do that? Yeah, you can see that the the damaged ship parts do actually slow you down, and yeah, they, they do get in the way. You know, you've got enough of those potholes, and they can slow you down by, you know, a few seconds. And that's all it takes to get yourself killed. Okay, open up. Maybe not. Okay, looking good, looking good. I gotta go down south though to. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, south and then. Over here. Okay, uh, heal up the four here. Whew. Okay then. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, it's a boss. Luckily, I've got a pretty good weapon against him. I can hit his weak spots. Oh, oh, that's not good. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that went better. Okay, yeah, I'm getting, a getting the feel for it now, you know. It's all about the rhythm. You gotta figure out, you know, just how fast you want to go. Don't kill everything in every single room. Just so you get what you need and get out of there. Cool. Yeah, I think I can go for medium. Medium difficulty. He said overly cocky. <laughs> but, uh, no, no, I'm feeling good about this now. There you go. Okay. Ooh, three rooms. So, whenever the difficulty increases, the party level up. Oh, okay. Um... Damager or Vortex? I think Vortex. So, yeah, the difficulty increases 
the amount of enemies, I guess. Maybe the enemy types, making them a little bit more vicious. Also adds more rooms. And more objective rooms. So, a nice round kind of amount of uh, difficulty in increase. You know, it's not just... Uh, you know, I hate games that have... You know, enemies just are more bullet sponges. You know, they, they take, you know... Medium is, you know, 50% more damage, and oh, now you're in horror that's the exact same game, except it's going to take you twice as long to defeat each enemy. It's like, come on. I don't want to play that. It's lame, you know. I mean, the best thing that you could prob probably do for increasing difficulty is always um, bumping up the AI, making them smarter. It's also probably the most difficult. But, um, yeah, it's fine if you've got, you know, a nice variety of, of things that are switching up the harder you go. Okay. I could do with finding a heal. There, so you can see the speed really starts to pick up. Whenever you get the hang of the controls, and oh, there's the vortex. Eh, it's not too impressive, actually. I was hoping it was going to do some damage as well, but... Nope. If I recall, though, it's very good against bosses. You know, the bosses tend to play more like bullet hells. So, being able to suck up all their bullets into one spot is pretty darn handy. Okay, time is at three minutes, so I should be okay with this. Invernable, so just slip through the shield. Yeah, I keep forgetting that I, I, I shouldn't be holding down the fire button because you actually get weaker. Or you get to the point where you just can't fire automatic. It's important to just use short bursts. I'm having a lot of fun though. <laughs> I hope it's as entertaining to watch. Uh, where else? Oh, I've got to pick up another energy cell. Ah, there we go. Okay. So move on to the last area. With two minutes. You could probably get to the point where you actually figure out exactly how much time it usually takes you to clear a, a room, and then figure out exactly how far you can get. Again, I, I played this a lot back in the day. I do kind of remember that. So it seems about, at the moment, it's about one minute a level. Oh, I'm taking way too much damage, I just noticed. Okay, pop that. I need to take out the turret. Oh, it's gone. Okay, wasted grenade. Oh, I got the fire though. Okay, another fire. That ought to do it. Nice! Ah, lost one guy. Huh. Ah, that's nice. A uh, wee bit of uh, color and stuff. Kind of like they're getting armored up as they go along, which they are. So they're all a bit more tougher and they can take a bit more damage. So I think I'll play one more level because I think I've shown off pretty much everything there is here. As I said, the game gets tougher, and more enemies show up. And the element of the roguelike kind of comes into it a little bit more, because you really do have to keep these guys alive. You 
can't be jumping into a level with, you know, like an, a harder difficulty level with people who have no armor. Okay. Oh, this is a bit of a dead end, actually, this area. My mistake. Yeah, I'm not too fussed about the flamethrower. Wish it was a bit better. Didn't really seem to do that much or any damage to the boss. Maybe it is better with uh, against smaller enemies. Probably clustered. Okay. Oh, that worked. Okay. Again, always mindful of that clock ticking up in the top. Let me see. So the blue bar at the top must be the sort of XP progression. So as I collect these things, you can see it fills up at the top. And then once I get that maxed up, then I level up and get a new grenade type to choose. Which again is very roguelike. It's a bit like Binding of Isaac, you know, you get to pick your your upgrades as you go along. I kinda wish I was picking up more of the basic grenades because they're pretty handy. Oh, what's this? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I've got to push those onto that. Okay, right, right. I'm taking damage. Damage every single time I'm doing that. Okay. Oh, this is no good. This is taking up my time. Minute and a half left. Okay. Push and run. Ugh. Red guy took a bit of a hit. I need some health. So these red ones, yeah, they explode. They explode and kill you. Yeah. Oh, they, well, got health, but already lost a guy. That's a shame. Okay, let's go. So, on to the final room, which is... Where? There it is. Okay. So, oh, each level, each room is randomized as well as the level. Okay. And the boss seems to have evolved. Oh, there's the bullet hell. I don't want to get stuck in this corner. Okay, okay, let's do this then. One more to finish it off. One more after that. Nice. Whew. Well, there you go. That is Pineapple Smash Crew. Really good game. I think uh, people should dig it up, check it out, buy it, play it, love it. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Steam Graveyard. I'll see you next time. Bye.